All right, after the last presidential debate, Donald Trump's lead, it shrunk to just four points over his nearest rival, Ted Cruz. According to the latest Quinnipiac poll, given the four-point margin of error, they are statistically tied. Now, in the same poll, 50% of Americans say they would be embarrassed if Donald Trump were elected president. Let's talk about it with our luscious party panel tonight. Ebony Williams joins us for the very first time. She's a Fox News contributor. Michael Malice is here. He's the author of Dear Reader, a fine writer. And to his left, it's Charles Cook, National Review writer. He writes so much, he actually wrote a book, The Conservatory Manifesto, which you should read immediately. We talk about it on every show. Uh, welcome, party panel. Welcome, Ebony. Thank you, Kennedy. These gentlemen are nice. They're so nice. Even though one told me before the show that he was intentionally going to be nice because he was told to be nice. I never said that. <laughs> I told you I was told to be you nice. You just told on yourself. I didn't even say which one. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, it is already on. I love it. All right, so, Charles, uh, let's talk about Cruz and Trump essentially tied in this Quinnipiac poll. Is Cruz surging and plateauing at the right time? I don't think he's plateaued. I think he's going to do very well. I think he might. Is he, he, he has room to grow. <laughs> he has room to grow. I think it's going to come down to Rubio and Cruz at the end. Yeah. Uh, but for the first time in the past few days, I've begun to think it's possible that Cruz could be the nominee. Mm -hmm. I still think it's going to be Rubio at the end. It's not going to be Trump. You said but that, and I think you're just saying that because uh, you'd be really embarrassed if you were wrong. No, and you've, no, you've no, said no. all along mm -hmm. that you don't think Donald Trump is going to win a single primary. That's correct. You don't think he's going to be the nominee. You think Marco Rubio is going to be the nominee. But as, as Rubio and Carson wane, mm. Cruz is waxing. Well, Cruz is surging. And he's doing well in the polls. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Cruz is surging. Uh, I don't think that uh, Rubio is done by any stretch of the imagination. I think what will happen is he'll end up being uh, the, not establishment or moderate, because he's neither, but yeah. closer to that uh, option. Yeah. I think they'll consolidate. Chris Christie will go, Jeb Bush will go, the rest of them will go. Rubio will become that horse. Yeah, I think the moderates are done, and those who have been... Uh, tested and failed the trial as outsiders. Donald Trump still prevailing. How is Cruz surging good for Trump? It is really good for him, Kennedy, in this way. This is going to force Trump. He's been out front by himself so long, right? And, he's lonely. And, and he's lonely out there. He was wanting some formidable competition. Now, well, he's got it. Cruz is now, like he said, statistically tied. And that's going to force Donald Trump to kind of calm down some of this more outlandish rhetoric that's going to make it hard. Look, you said in the intro, 50% of people embarrassed by him. Yeah. Well, how do you cure that? Let's be presidential. And with Cruz on his tails, he's going to have to become a more presidential, rock-solid type of candidate, which I, uh, will help him in the long term. I, I respectfully disagree with you, because if what? you saw his, uh, <laughs> his rhetoric over the weekend talking about Hillary Clinton's trip to the bathroom oh, I did during the debate, yeah. oh, mercy. Yeah. So are, are people just bouncing around from candidate to candidate? Is, is it like a, a roulette wheel and the ball just hasn't landed in the right slot? Always bet on Trump. No, I looked at the <laughs> Quinnipiac poll from November 20, 2011, and at at that point, Gingrich was ahead, then Romney, and then Santorum was at 2%. As we know, Santorum went on to win Iowa. Right. So this poll is national, and it's kind of irrelevant, because what matters is who's going to win Iowa, who's going to win New Hampshire. And Trump is clearly ahead, at very least in New Hampshire. Iowa Cruz, yes, is picking up. Yeah. But that's what happened in 2012. People were like, who is going to defeat the frontrunner? They bounced around. And at the end, no one could defeat the frontrunner. And, try, and uh, in that case, Romney took it home. Well, that's true. But in Iowa, I think at this point in 2011, Rick Santorum didn't even Correct. feature, and by the end of it, he won. Right. So I, I don't think Trump's going to win. I think Cruz will win Iowa. Uh, I don't think that uh, Trump will win New Hampshire either. I could see Cruz wow. winning New Hampshire, oddly enough, and also... No. See, I, think, I, think I think Cruz no is going to come in second in New Hampshire. That is my prediction. Cruz comes in a solid second. He wins Iowa, and then he goes to the SEC and does... I, I think he cleans up. I really do. I mean, wow. I, think it's, I think it's a clearer path for Cruz right now than it is for Rubio. There is a clear path. The problem is there's also Florida and Nevada now. If Rubio's... Nevada. Uh, no, Nevada. Uh, and Montana. And Louisiana. Um, oh, Louisiana. Well, if, well, well, I don't actually say them like that. Um, <laughs> if Cruz, uh, if Rubio does well in Nevada and Florida, which is yeah. his plant, then he'll be back in it. The problem is if he pulls a Giuliani and he waits too late and the momentum is behind Cruz, then Cruz is going to walk away with the nominee. I believe you'll find it's pronounced Rudy. All right, the mud, <laughs> fl the mud is flinging between Hillary... It's that thing that I love about you. Hillary and Donald Trump. At Saturday's Democratic debate, Hillary Clinton claimed that ISIS is using Donald Trump as a recruitment tool. Trump demanded an apology and then last night went on the attack about a variety of topics. She's terrible. Donald Trump is on video and ISIS is using him on the video to recruit. 
and it turned out to be a lie. She's a liar. I'm watching the debate, and she disappeared. Where did she go? Where did she go? I thought she quit. I know where she went. It's disgusting. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, he said, Ruthless, so he knows at this point when he said those comments uh -huh. that he and Cruz are statistically tied, not making him any more presidential. That's the classy presidential stuff I'm talking about, Kennedy. No, look, it's not set in yet yeah. that, that really, truly he's in, some, he's in some trouble. He's got some real competition here. But see, let's talk about Hillary for one second. See, this is where she hurts herself. I actually take the position that, that, that the, the underlying claim she's making could have taken hold at least to the audience she was speaking yeah. to you know that this anti-muslim thing will be a problem and will infuriate uh you if know she talked our, about our it enemies broadly and didn't Bro claim but that there was a she video goes so far as to make stuff up and yeah. then that hurts her and it makes her look more untrustworthy than most people find her already to be all right so hillary clinton has she ever faced an opponent who so unashamedly exploits her flaws well maybe her husband but uh, <laughs> am i right no here's the thing look at how trump is fighting her versus how Sanders is fighting her. Sanders is making apologies for her, yeah. making excuses for her as opposed to letting her twist in the wind. Trump Trump accused Hillary of being responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people and is demanding she apologize <laughs> for saying there's a video with him. These, these are not a moral parody, but that's the beautiful thing about him. He will be as shameless as her, yeah. and he will be relentless in attacking her. And the woman does have a glass jaw, and she's not good in the counterattack because all she has is this sense of arrogance, dismissiveness, and that doesn't very play well in the flyover it really, it, it absolutely doesn't, and that's why this is so intriguing to watch because, you know, all she's got is victimhood, and I don't think that... I don't I don't think she will do well against Donald Trump with that. She has to have more, and I think it's going to take her campaign too long to figure out what that is to defeat well, him. If he can stay in, not win the nomination, but help damage her, then he will probably have been a net asset for the yeah. Republican yeah. side. Yeah. The problem is he also does this with everyone else. I mean, he, he and he has a knack of going right to the, to the yeah, right, right there. Um, yeah, he, he said that Marco Rubio sweats a lot, which is true. I mean, Marco Rubio also has a dry mouth. Uh, he said that Jeb Bush appears if only he low had tea. Sweat in his mouth. If he sweated into his mouth. Yes. Or it would be a little cycle that could, it would <laughs> almost self-sufficient. Self Do you want him to be elected? But here is the here is the problem, though. I mean, it, yeah. is that he's he's not just doing it to Hillary. He does it to anyone who annoys him. Yeah. Uh, and so he's going to damage everyone in the field except for But that's himself. the thing about Trump that I, I, don't, I think a lot of people like. Again, there's a reason why he's this anti-establishment candidate who's done so well for so long. Yeah. People like that he's not pandering to his you know, party mates. Uh, for, you know, that might hurt the Republican brand, absolutely, but it helps the Trump brand. Everyone loves their own brand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming up, President Obama says Donald Trump is whipping up the masses over economic insecurity. Does that remind you of any left-wing populist candidates, hmm? And later, Congress passed a second Patriot Act while no one was watching. Now the government will be watching us with their new spy powers. I will tell you what you need to know, and it is frightening. Please stay right here. Oh, Charles is my own little Union Jack. Uh, this week, President Obama accused Republican frontrunner Donald Trump of exploiting economic fears to get ahead in the race. There is going to be potential uh, anger, frustration, uh, fear. Some of it justified, but just misdirected. Uh, and uh, you know, I think somebody like Mr. Trump's taken advantage of that. Uh, I mean, that's what he's exploiting uh, uh, during the course of his campaign. Unlike, say, ooh, I don't know, Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, oh, no, no economic fear-mongering there. The party panel is back. Ebony Williams, Michael Malice, and Charles Cook. Uh, it, Michael, he went on to say he was talking about factory workers. He said they're no longer getting the same bargain of going to a factory and being able to support a family on a single paycheck. He's talking about blue-collar workers. Yeah. The guy's never been to a factory in his life. Well, the only factories I've ever been to in North, are in North Korea. Yes, I don't know if that's to, against him, but the point is, did you notice he said Mr. Trump and not Donald Trump? This was a dog whistle from Obama to the Democratic base telling them, watch out, Trump is going after the Reagan Democrats and that's there's right. something to worry about.
worry about. And we have to take this guy seriously, and we can't just dismiss him as a clown any longer. Yeah, and well, this is also a, a base that they've always taken for yes. granted. You know, these are people that have been dependent Since FDR. on the government. Right. Exactly. And that's how they've carried them along. But, you know, maybe someone from the outside comes along with a message of possible prosperity for everyone and making America great again. Um, so, Ebony, how could he be resentful? Uh, when this is the basis of Sanders' argument, when we're talking about the 1%, when we're talking about Occupy Wall Street and all of the economic hysteria mm -hmm. that's ginned up by the left, they're the ones who created it. Well, I think that's why he's, like he said, a little bit upset about it. Uh, it's really not that different than we saw President Obama running. You know, yeah. he had a very populist message, too. He can be the economic recovery. And you can't be mad at Donald Trump for taking advantage of it. We're just not accustomed to seeing the Republican Party sell a populist message. Yeah. That's what I think is taking people off guard. I think the president's right. Donald Trump's like, he's, he's exploiting it, but that's to put a negative connotation on it. It's smart politics. Can't be mad at the man yeah. for being successful on that. No, I'm not mad yeah, at anyone know, I, for being know. successful, yeah. and I yeah. want people to know that there is a message out there where you can create your own businesses, you can create your own wealth in this country unlike any other country on earth. My worry about economic populism on the right is that it still relies on the government to function. Well, it doesn't just rely on the government to function. It's a repudiation of the idea that any individual uh, might be right. Yeah. Uh, it is a, a, an argument of ad populum, to use the term. It, it, it's not conservative. Uh, the, the fact is conservatives tend to believe that uh, what has gone before should be respected, not necessarily always upheld, but at least respected. Um, and they tend to believe that great ideas come from unexpected places. Yeah. Sometimes that's a laboratory with two or three scientists working. Sometimes that's a philosopher. Sometimes that's a small group of founding fathers. Um, the idea of taking a William Jennings Bryan approach and saying the guys with pitchforks must be right because there are more of them yeah. is dangerous to, to ordered liberty. I, I'm not a populist. I don't like the tendency. And it is, that is the enemy of economic progress, which is what sure. we don't have in this country. We have economic stagnation, well, we've got too much regulation, and uh, we've got interest rates that are held low, which are also strangling growth. Yeah, but, yeah, but when Trump talks at the last debate about using the money we spent on these wars yeah. to put millions and billions into American infrastructure, he got applause for that line, Kennedy, at a Republican debate. So I know, again, and, and it, it lets us the know problem is, you know, Rick Santorum and John Kasich are also realizing that. There are, there are a lot of sure. men on both stages mm -hmm. uh, who are saying the same thing, just rah, clap trap. <laughs> the panel returns a little bit later. But first, a major battle happening right now to get ISIS out of a stronghold in Iraq. You should download Chapo's album. It's really good. Welcome back. United Airlines is doing its part to make airports less terrible. Thanks, United. From December 21st to the 23rd, it will unleash 230 trained comfort dogs at seven airports to give people some canine love between the gates and the TSA. The party panel is back. To, uh, to chew on that bone, it's Ebony Williams, Michael Mellis, and Charles Cook. So, Ebony... My only worry is what happens when people uh, mistake the TSA drug dogs for comfort dogs and go and just get in their face and then they get busted for the black tar heroin. That's well, you know, and that's so unfortunate when that happens. Look, my concern, Kennedy, is this. I got a girlfriend who's like deathly afraid of dogs. Oh. Like if you like come into an apartment with a dog, she freaks out. Yeah. So my not, godfather's like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So most people love them. I think it's so sweet. I think it would make me feel better. But yeah. what about those people that are scared of dogs? They're gonna be freaked. They Cats can go to France okay. with all the other cowards. Oh. <laughs> Sure. Listen, people have been comparing Trump to Hitler all year. Yeah. In my view, if you don't like dogs, you're literally you're Hitler. Hitler. Yeah. Dogs are the best. There should be dogs everywhere. They're awesome. And if you can't get over your fear, I don't even want to talk to you. You should be on the no-fly list, frankly. No, I, I love dogs. And in fact, Charles, you never hear about comfort cats. You, you never hear about a place that has uh, therapy cats. Yes, where you can just... there's the cat that predicts when people die at the nursing home. That was the thing. The cat oh, would go great. sit in someone's bed and the person would die in a Yeah, that's, that's not because the cat was psychic. It's because the cat was stealing their yes. life force because they are agents of the devil. So I'm, I'm a that. huge fan of cats, but I'm also a huge fan of dogs because we now have a dog. And you're deathly allergic to cats. I am deathly allergic to cats, but that happened after I became a huge fan of cats. 
It was very upsetting. I know, cats didn't want a, a part of you because your good nature actually it smothers I think, their I think demonity. I cats dislike people who dislike cats. No, I, I went to Prague to play with my friend's pet cheetah because his dad owns a zoo and it took a swipe at my face. Mm -hmm. And ever since that, I have seen the face of evil, That's both in right. the mirror and at the cheetah. <laughs> yeah, and it's again, what happens when these uh, dogs start to pack up and become feral? <laughs> Why would you say such a thing? Because the TSA is feral, so of course they're going to live for the masters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right. Wait. <laughs> when you receive a, or steal a Christmas present you don't actually like, is it all right to re-gift it? The term was popularized in an episode of Seinfeld. Mm. You know, those things make great gifts. I just got one of those for Tim Watley for Christmas. Tim Watley? Yeah, he sent you that one. One Tim Watley. No. My Tim Watley? The same. He sent it as a thank you for my Super Bowl ticket. He recycled this gift. He's a re-gifter. That's right. According to the New York Daily News, the most common re-gifting items are in no particular order. Candles, gift cards, houseware, clothing, bath caps, shower gels and lotions, fruitcake, gift baskets, and of course, booze. Where do you stand on re-gifting, Charles? I'm in favor of it for all except booze. <laughs> if you don't want the booze, you should just drink it to get over the fact you don't want the booze. <laughs> the rest of it, fine. No, my question is, who doesn't want booze? I mean, I don't understand. I don't have those kinds of friends. I yeah. wish I had the kinds of friends that would re-gift me booze. I would, I would invite them. Yeah, but you wouldn't them. be friends with them in the first place. That's exactly the point. Because they wouldn't want booze. See, but I, exactly I like right. giving uh, thoughtful alcohol gifts <laughs> to my friends. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't want to incur too much judgment. But is re-gifting the new bartering? I, I, I don't, I don't, that's the weirdest SAT analogy question I've heard. Regifting is to bartering as interest rates are to blank. I don't know. I've never, I don't get You've never done it? I, I, Stop I, it. Do you regift? You don't regift? No one totally ever gives me gifts to begin with because oh I'm goodness. unlovable. So I have no gifts to give to anybody else. I don't have any friends. My affection is quantifiable. <laughs> you can give that away again and again. Yeah. And never yeah. have to go to the Here you go. <laughs> Take it, take it. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, kidding. Oh, so if uh, <laughs> if you don't re-gift, you are a hoarder. There's actually something wrong with you if you don't re-gift because we've got too much stuff to begin with. All right, so what do you do to get half off on a hotel room? Hotels are so expensive nowadays. It doesn't matter what site you go to. Well, one company is discounting rooms 50%. That sounds fantastic. But there's a catch because you have to share the room with a stranger. Safe, cheap. Effective dating alternative? All right, so, uh, Michael, what's your biggest fear here? To me, I will quote Sartre and say, hell is other people. Mm. And the idea that you have to share your, the room that you're farting in proudly with strangers is hideous and disgusting. Yeah, no, sleeping space is a sacred space. Look, I love this. You guys are, like, totally being haters here. Yes. I think that privacy has a, a price, right? We have a premium for privacy. If you're willing to forego that privacy, why shouldn't you reap a financial reward? I think this is awesome. All right, so, Charles, did you realize that uh, a lot of these hotel discounts happen in either cities where there are a lot of hippies or swingers? Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, L.A., Las Vegas. They mm. all have half seas with... Stranger travelers. Mm. I've been to most of those cities and it would not surprise me. Although, I, one of my friends came to my uh, wedding and had inadvertently booked himself into one of these hotels. This is true. Oh. And so he had to leave. Uh, because the person who came in was was interesting. Let's put it that way. And, what kind uh, of interest? There are different shades of interest. Yeah, um, like extra limbs. Uh, no, not extra limbs, um, but uh, perhaps dressing in a in a in a way that was inappropriate when there's someone else in the room. Oh, like like not dressing? No camo shorts. Camo no. what? Camo shorts. Oh, camo. You guys are just antisocial. I yeah, really obviously. No, I think I'm, I'm rational. Everybody. I think I'm very practical. Oh, my God. Hyper-practicality is both? the savior of our future. Yeah. Totally do. It's both. No, I just, I, I, I think You guys are quelling my economic But I'm right forced now. to share space on planes. But you're not forced. You on guys? planes? Yeah. Oh, I can't, on planes. I, I on can't planes fly private yet. No? I mean, whew, maybe next year, 2017. <laughs> Open for it. You're kidding. Next year's 2016, though. I know, so I gotta wait a whole year. I mean, I'm gonna be a realist. Like, Thanks, next year, Charles. Next, <laughs> next, there's no way I'm flying private next week, Charles. Right, right. Unless you know something Mr. I don't. Mr. I just Andy thought Lady. you'd like to know. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Charles, Michael, and Ebony. Glorious vixen of uh, oh this great moment. Thank, thank you. you all so much. Thank you, Kennedy. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right, coming up, the government has new spying powers you probably don't know about.